In this second recording on bonus results from Fourier series, I'm going to prove the result shown here for the series involving the reciprocals of odd whole numbers with alternating plus and minus sign. The sum of that series is pi by 4. This might remind you a little bit of the series we did in part one of these recordings, but remember that there we had squares of odd numbers in the denominator, rather than just the numbers themselves. As before, we need a function with a Fourier series to prove this result. The function we can use for this series is the following one. It's the function which jumps halfway along its period from negative constant value to positive of that constant value. I've allowed the period here to be 2L and the constant C to be anything. However, as we progress through the example, we would discover that in fact the values of C and L are irrelevant to this problem. So I might as well choose them to be some simple values. I'm going to choose both C and L to be 1. So I'll change those now. Let's have a look at the graph of this function now. It looks like this. Imagine swiveling that graph by 180 degrees about a pivot at the origin. Can you see that apart from the open and closed endpoints that graph would just merge with itself after that rotation? We can show that the difference in the open and closedness of the endpoints is irrelevant as far as the Fourier series is concerned, so we can ignore that little problem. That means that this is an odd function in effect. An odd function has no cosine terms and no constant in its Fourier series. So the a0 and all the an will be 0. There will only be bn's. I'm not going to calculate the Fourier series here. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. But if you do it carefully, you'll discover that, in fact, not even all of the b's are present. It turns out that only those with n odd survive the process. The Fourier series then looks like this. The restriction to only odd b's has been achieved here by using 2n minus 1 instead of n as the function inside the sum. Notice that also I've included only relevant things in the sum that contain n. The constant 4 over pi has been brought to the front. Now you should recall that to get further and find a sum of a series without the sign-in, we need to make a specific choice of t. Some easy values of sign that we can write down quickly would be sign of whole numbers of pi or whole numbers of pi by 2. But sign of whole numbers of pi would always be 0. So then we'd lose everything and that's not very interesting. Let's try setting t equal to a half so that we get sine of odd numbers of pi over 2. If we're going to set t equals a half we'd better work out what f of one half is. Look at the graph. Quite clearly f of one half is equal to 1. So if we put t equals a half the left hand side of this expression will just be 1. The equation now looks like this. Now let's think about signs of odd numbers of pi by 2. Let's write a few of them out. Recall that sine of pi by 2 is equal to 1. Sine of 3 pi by 2 is negative 1. After that, the values alternate between 1 and negative 1 all the time. So that allows us to write out some terms of the series on the right-hand side. The result is exactly the series that we started with at the beginning of this recording, with 4 over pi in front. To get the sum of that series, therefore, all we have to do is multiply both sides by pi over 4. The resulting value for the sum of the series is pi by 4, as was claimed at the start of this recording. I'm going to stop there, but as an exercise you might like to consider a little bit what would happen if I chose instead of t equals a half, the value t equals a quarter. I'll leave that for you to think about.